Hey, what's up guys? In this video I'm going to teach you how to shoot a handgun like a pro. And uh, why would you listen to me? Because I used to shoot uh, competitive pistol shooting for a number of years when I lived in BC. And I still shoot my pistol all the time when I go to the range. And um, maybe I'll post a video of uh, me doing so. I'm, I'm pretty good at it, okay? So um, the first thing that uh, when it comes to, I'll just get right into it, pistol shooting is that uh, you want to have a good grip on the pistol, okay? So, doing so, you got to be high up, like right on that beaver tail, you call it, like choked up. Because if you're down here, the pistol is going to be doing a lot of this, okay? And so you get up there. This, the other thing is where your where your uh, finger is on the trigger. So first of all, I'm just going to prove that this is safe. It's empty. Okay? There's no there's no rounds in it, okay? Get out here, boy. So, like I said, uh, your fingers got to be in the right area. It can't be too much over this way. It can't be too much over that way. It's got to be right there, and you'll get the feeling of that, okay, when you do so, okay? And uh, the second thing is the stance, which is important. Now, there's a bit of a uh, debate which is better, the isosceles or the weaver stance. Isosceles is when you're squared up like this, and weaver stance is when you have one foot forward. I prefer the weaver because for me that's more natural. It's like if you're fighting somebody or in a sword fight or something, you're like you're not gonna be squared up to somebody throwing punches. You're gonna be like this throwing punches, correct? And the reason why is when you're actually moving while shooting, it's better. And but it all comes down to personal personal preference. Trust me, I used to shoot isosceles a lot, and isosceles is generally used more for competitive pistol shooting, but not always. Some people still shoot Weaver. And the reason why is it's just better to square up to your target for accuracy a lot of the time in, in recoil management. But uh, Weaver stance in real life scenarios, you, you got a bit more of like, your profile is a bit smaller. You're able to move, like step forward. Uh, like when you watch police officers or military, they, they'll use Weaver stance, okay? So that's stance. When it comes down to things, okay? Sight acquisition. So when you bring the pistol up, you don't bring your head down to the sight, okay? First of all, you keep both eyes open. You don't like close one eye and do one of these, right? Keep both eyes open. You're looking at the target and you bring the sights to your eyes. You know what I mean? It's not like your head moves, okay? And you gotta practice that. You're not going here and then here because that's another unnecessary movement and uh, it's, it's just you're not going to be able to do it as fast as reliably if you're especially if you're engaging multiple targets you have to keep doing this every time right it's not good you hit boom next one pull the sight boom and the way you can practice that is you just find like a something on the wall like a light switch that's all i do i'll just sit here look at the lights you're looking at the target so your eyes don't move your head doesn't move and you just bring the sight up to to whatever you're looking at, okay? You gotta practice that to be very good. And once you get that, you're shooting me a lot better. Now, generally when people start shooting pistol, they'll, they'll shoot paper targets, and that's what I, I would say you start off with, but then move very quickly to metal targets. First, when you shoot pistol targets, you're gonna see where the grouping is when you're shooting like a bullseye at like, you know what I mean, just 10 yards away, okay? Because generally people will be shooting a bit left and the reason why is every time they pull a trigger They're I'm exaggerating, but you're gonna pull a trigger and they're gonna they're gonna go like this with their gun Okay, shooting a bit left Way to stop that is with this hand Comes up here and that creates like a wall and I do a method where I point my thumbs at my target Okay, sometimes I accidentally hit the The slide so my, my last uh, slide release so at my last round it's, 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 it doesn't stay open, it closes, which it's kind of a mistake I make sometimes, but it's just the way my thumbs are. But when you do that, it creates a wall on the side. So this doesn't happen anymore because you create, look, the difference between this and having a wall here, right? So we, you, be, you can be bing, 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 bing without having that movement happen, okay? So that's a very important thing. Up, oh, shoot, holding it like that, okay? And the difference of like the grip is like, <clears throat> Obviously you grip reasonably tight with this hand, but this hand is like more tight, okay? That's how I do it anyway. Now, um, the other thing is you, you have a holster, okay? It's outside the waistband holster. So 
you like look I kept looking you standing up mind you I'm standing up looking at that light switch pulling out of my holster to my line of sight on on target with with that grip perfect and even doing some dry firing you know and some people are like don't dry fire your pistols you might you know ruin your 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 your, your trigger and your pin and whatever trust me I dry fire my guns many times nothing's been ruined doing that um, the type of gun now I have a Glock 17 Gen 5 so this is more of like a tactical like a duty style pistol I like the duty style striker fire pistols they're generally not used for um, competitive shooting competitive shooting the the CZ shadow 2 a lot of people use for competitive shooting but uh, which is a very nice gun I love that gun but the thing is though it's very heavy and the trigger's really good on it. It's a, it's a hammer fire pistol instead of a striker fire. Okay, but you would never use a CZ. Well, you could, but generally, like a police officer wouldn't use a CZ Shadow Two. Okay, they would use something like this, and militaries would use something like this. So, in real life scenarios, I recommend using a gun that's a real life scenario and sticking with it. Like, learn the platform, whatever platform you're using. Like, just use that one. Okay, don't be. You know, a lot of people have like a gun collection. They'll shoot one thing one week and shoot one thing the other week, which is all good and all. Like, whenever I've collected collective guns and things, I like to shoot all types of guns myself. But stick with the one platform that you really want to use because practice with that and become an expert on that. Okay. So, um, and then the type of round, I recommend nine millimeter. It's like the for me the best round for a pistol. Like you wouldn't want to go. Smaller. I wouldn't want to go 22 LR pistol. Uh, you could though for like you know just practicing, but and you wouldn't want to go too much more either. Like some people like 45s and things, which is great round. I've shot many 45s myself, but I prefer the nine millimeter because uh, the recoil management. You can get much more rounds on target much quicker. For me anyway. I know somebody who shoots a 45 really well. I'm sure they can do really well too. But there's a reason why this is used by. FBI and, and all types of uh, of uh, of militaries a nine millimeter round. Okay, so uh, yeah, I recommend the Glock. Either Glock 17 or Glock 19 is a very good choice. This is the 17, and it's one that like I was at the uh, border crossing the United States, and I was you know they, they, everybody was strapped there, right? All the border guards, and they they all had. Glock 17s, pretty much. I was looking at their guns. So, uh, yeah, it's, and the reason why is, for one, it's very reliable. And two is, it's kind of like the Lego of handguns. Kind of like an AR-15, which, which is like, there's so many aftermarket parts and triggers and slides and barrels and everything you can add to it. Okay, so it's like, you know, you can you can like piece together your own gun if you really want. This is just pure stock. Like, I was going to get a trigger. I was going to get new sights. But to be honest, you don't even really need it with, with this gun. It's really good. Once you get used to it, you get used to the trigger. So, okay, got all that down. Now you have a gun. You know how to stand. You know how to, you know, uh, target acquisition. You know how to pull the trigger, right, like with the trigger finger and everything. Okay. So uh, next, what do you do next? So I obviously I, I told you like you're not gonna be doing this. So once you get that down, we actually can shoot straight, okay, and reliably on a paper target. Move to steel very quickly, because with steel you either hit the target or you don't, and the target's small enough where it's like like those little round um, plates essentially uh, discs that um, what like that's the only that's the important thing. If you can hit those reliably, that's good enough for you, okay. And once you do so, here's the thing you do. So either holstered or just point it down in what's called a ready position or recommended down position, okay? Like this. You bring it up, like again, not moving your head, on target, very slowly at first, on target and go bing, bing. Two shots, hitting that steel, okay? Take your time at first. As long as you hit it, it's an important thing. Next, you might gain a little bit of speed, so you can bring it up a little quicker. Bing, bing. Next, work on getting the, the double tap a little quicker. So, bing, bing. And what you'll find is each gun has a rhythm, specifically each round, but guns too. 
where the recoil goes ping, and then it comes back down and go to the again to the line of sight, ping. Okay, there's a bit of recoil. If you did it too fast, bing, you go bing, and then bing, so you're not on target. So you, yeah, it's like bing, bing. There's a there's a rhythm. And even rifles, like bigger caliber rifles, it'd be like pew, pew, right? There would be a little bit longer of a rhythm. Pistols with a small caliber, a little bit quicker of a rhythm. So you find that rhythm of that gun, okay? And you learn how to do that drill really well. Like, really well. That's, well, pretty much a lot of what I do when I'm at the at the range with my pistol. Sometimes I just like to unload and, you know, that's fun too. But, you know, that you really won't learn too much if you're just shooting quick at a target. What you'll learn is, like, I get the target, I bing. Bing, bing. And you can do that from a holster position too. Bing. Obviously, the two hands I recommend. And then lastly, once you get that down, you add a mag change. So you have a mag that's already loaded with two rounds, and you load two rounds like this. So it'd be like this. Bing, bing. And you just drop it. You drop this, and then you have another one that you put in. When you put it in, you use this called indexing. So you should be able to index your and put it in into uh, the mag uh, without even looking. It should be like it should be like second nature, where this finger just finds it and then it can, and then it puts it in. Okay, you're not like trying to like locate the hole, right? It's just like you have one ready and it's just like shoo, shoo, good to go. Shut up. So that's that. And then if you have the ability after that and you get that done really well, then if, if your range allows it, some ranges don't, mine doesn't, to be honest, my other ones did, learn how to shoot on the move. Just by moving a little bit sideways and shooting. And then sideways the other way. A little bit back, a little bit forward, right? And it's like, a, it's very much like boxing where you like take little steps. So you're in like a forward stance, and you just move your front foot forward and your back foot up. Your back foot sideways, your other foot sideways, like this. Right, and on target. If you can do that whilst doing everything else I taught you, but again, the most important thing is just being able to like target acquisition, fire, boom. If you can do that really well, man, that's how you become a good shooter, I'm telling you. Now, does anybody else have any advice I know there's a lot of other things I could explain in this video, but I think I covered it all pretty well considering 12, we're at 13 minutes right now, all very well. But so to highlight again, grip up here, trigger finger properly on the, on the, on the trigger, stance, proper weaver stance, okay? Target acquisition when you raise, you raise the gun to your line of sight not your head to the line of sight. This hand protects from doing this. So it's like this, bing, bing, bing. Go to the range, practice a double tap from a ready position. Practice the mag change with a double tap, double tap, mag change, double tap. And then lastly, you just practice moving a little bit while shooting sideways, forward, whatnot. If you can do all that very consistently, eight or nine out of 10 on, on from 10 rounds on like a little steel target, then you're a good shooter, I would say. Obviously, there's a lot of other practice you can do, but that, it's that easy to become a good shooter, okay guys? So if you're interested, Glock 17 would be a very nice gun to have. Glock 19 would be also very other good choice. I'm kind of a Glock guy. That's not what I do, but it, some people hate Glocks. That's fine. There's other choices out there too. You know, if you want a Beretta or whatever else, go for that. Just learn that platform. Get a platform that's reliable. Learn it. Don't buy some cheap ass, cheap ass shit that's going to be potentially unreliable. This one has never, never had uh, a misfire or miss cycle at all, ever. I put thousands of rounds through it. So, I'll leave it there, guys. What are your thoughts on uh, on um, how to shoot a handgun properly? Because 
you know, in the end, uh, you know, it could come down to a life or a death situation, or who knows how the world's going to happen, you know. They might ban them eventually, and you'll never be able to get one. So get one while you still can, even in the United States. Who knows? Kamala Harris might fucking ban all handguns. You'd be shit out of luck. I don't think it'll happen. I think a lot of states would stand up to that. Other than Canada, they already did ban them. Well, it could never happen to you. Yeah, it already happened to me. Luckily, I got this one when I did, because right now, I, I would never be able to buy this one, at least legally. So, I'll leave it there, guys. Leave in the comments section below what you, what you think about this video. Okay? Peace.